tonight. Jimmy's at risk of blowing his boat out of the water. This is really dangerous. John faces his final challenge when he takes his fish to market. It's not very good. And new boy Ryan has his sea legs tested to the max. It's all in a day's work for the men who do the most dangerous job in Britain. Only 150 miles south of the Arctic Circle, on the deck of whitefish trawler Ocean Venture, the temperature has plummeted to minus 10. I hate snow. The crew are exhausted after working 18 hours every day for the past week. We're treated like animals out here. We're treated like animals. <laughs> after catching some valuable Greenland halibut, and filling 95 boxes with expensive redfish, the crew should be leaving the Atlantic and heading for home. But skipper John Buchan can't resist one last haul. And this time, they really hit the jackpot. Oh, look at that. So it could happen. Aye, that is a better sight to see. Yeah, there's cod in there, that's what we want. Look at that lovely cod, eh? That good, good big fat cod will be very expensive. Dearer than Greenland halibut. <laughs> Beautiful. Gold dust. Gold dust. Yeah. Deckhand Jonathan is delighted. This is the last haul of the trip. The best haul we've had of cod. Lovely big fat cod. Beauties. Where's all your pals, eh? Where's your pals, eh? It's a big boost getting that cord just now. Make all the difference in our pay. How many fresh suburbs? Give us a clue, eh? Have a guess. <laughs> this one haul could fetch more than 5,000 pounds at market. We've done our bit. It's out of our hands now. It's up to the fish buyers. If they could pay us plenty of money, we might have a, a good pay at the end of it, I hope. Two hundred miles east, in the North Sea, the prawn trawler Amity is also catching a lot of fish. But for skipper Jimmy Buchan, that's a problem. He should be catching prawns. Under EU regulations, fish can only make up 65% of a prawn boat's total catch. If Jimmy catches any more than that, he's legally obliged to throw the fish overboard. My biggest fear is if there's more fish here, I've got to go down into the deck, face the boys, say, boys, you've got to chuck them back. These guys have been through hell and back this week, for themselves and for me. This hole is absolutely vital to me this trip. Sad, really, is it? Nice fish. Not enough prawns. And I honestly don't know what to do. I'm supposed to throw them back over the side, and I just can't bring myself to do it. To avoid dumping his fish, most of which are dead already, Jimmy is forced to make a tough decision. To find prawns, he's going to steam a hundred miles back to a fishing ground called the Devil's Hole that he left nine days ago. He caught almost nothing there first time around, 
but Jimmy's tempted to try again. I still have a hunch about this place. It's one of those places me against Mother Nature again. If the bronze is there, my best advice to them is look out. Amity's after you. Amity, south eight to severe gale. Back in southeast, rain, moderate or poor. In the harbour, a record breaking boat is preparing to leave port. Over the past few years, whitefish trawler Ryanwood has earned a reputation for landing some of the North Sea's biggest catches. This makes Kevin West one of the most successful skippers in the fleet. But even he's not happy about going to sea today. Looking for an excuse not to go. <laughs> Quite easily go back home and just stay another day. But needs must. Ryanwood is heading for Norwegian waters, 180 miles away. But she's not going alone. For 10 years, she's fished as one half of a pair alongside sister ship. Castlewood. In 2005, they set a UK record, becoming the first pair trawlers to gross two million pounds in one year. Their success depends on the experience of their crew. But on this trip, Ryanwood has a new boy on board. 17-year-old Ryan Morrison. Good fun working with the guys. Cool. Hello. This is Ryan's first job at sea. This is my bed. Yeah. I thought it would be one big cave and I'd be in. But it's, it's comfortable, it's cozy. That's my girlfriend in a while. I'm too big here. The roof's a bit low. This is everybody's oil skins and boots in here. It's a toilet. You just hold on with your hands <laughs> and aim, aim for the toilet. <laughs> Sometimes it's quite difficult. It's easier if you just go inside. Overall, quite pleased with the boat. It's quite comfortable inside. Yeah. Um, if I've been doing my heat and work, uh, I'm sure I'll be here for a while. Ryan's been attracted by the lure of big money. But having only done a 12-week course in fishing skills, he needs to prove that he's good enough to win a permanent job aboard the best boat in the fleet. Above all, he needs to impress the skipper, Kevin. There's nothing stopping Ryan. Nothing stopping Ryan uh, making it in the fishing industry. But he'll make up his own mind to speak. Back on Ocean Venture, John and the crew are packing the last of their bumper catch of corn. Nine days ago, this hold was completely empty. Now it's full with over 65,000 fish of all varieties. Deckhand Allen is thinking of payday. I'm going to have a new car, I'm going to have Sky TV, I'm going to have a new kitchen. Right now, we're going home. H.O. Amy, home. Beautiful day, good fishing. What more do you need? Eh, it's a great life. If you want to sign up, just give me a call. <laughs> Aye, we're going home. I'm going to get there quicker. Anything I can do to make this boat go faster. Oh, brilliant. 
can't beat it. Great feeling when you get through the pier hits. Home at last. It's good to be back on dry land, but you always find even the first day or so you still find yourself swaying back and forth in the house. Aye, true enough. If you're standing in the kitchen making yourself a cup of tea and you'd be going like this, and then you think, oh no, wait, I'm on dry land, I don't need to do that anymore. Ten days of hard graft is finally over. But they know that it will all be for nothing if their fish doesn't sell for a good price at tomorrow's market. The pair trawlers have just entered Norwegian waters and are about to start fishing. Pair trawlers tow one giant net between them. It covers more of the seabed and should catch more fish than two single boats. But sharing the net means the trawlers have to come together to exchange ropes. And lining up a pair of 200-ton boats isn't easy. Even though he's done it many times, Skipper Kevin remains cautious. The main things about putting a fair trolley is to make sure the boats don't come together. Because uh, if they do come together, it could be quite dangerous. There has been boats, when they've collided together, they've actually sunk. Attaching lines is a vital part of pair trawling, and it's something Ryan's keen to see, if he can make it up on deck in time. By the time Ryan arrives on deck, all the work is done. Now the boats move half a mile apart to tow the net between them. With the net in the water for the next four hours, the crew can relax. But Ryan's staying on deck. One hundred miles away, Amity has arrived at the Devil's Hole. It's a last-ditch attempt by Skipper Jimmy to catch some prawns. It's getting so serious now, I'm starting to look for those large prawns with my binoculars. I'm beginning to wonder if that's one passing now. First mate Kevin wants to end the trip with a bang. What he finds in the net isn't quite what he had in mind. We're just heaving up the gear here, and I've just seen a small torpedo on the net. I'm quite nervous about this, because I don't know whether it's live or not. This could be very dangerous. If it's live, we're all in trouble here. Come on, we made you. All right, leave her, leave her. Whoa. I don't want it to blow up here. Be very careful with this. It's not too often we pick up the likes of this, but this is really dangerous. If this blows up now, I'm a goner. 
think I'll stay up here. You may. I think we're quite safe. I see a lot of water in it. To prevent other vessels from picking up the torpedo, Kevin stores it until Amity reaches port. She's full of water. I'm pretty sure it's, it's a dead one. I think if it was live, I would be out of here. I'll leave it at a bit of an angle, so if it does go off, she can go that way. <laughs> or if I fall out with the skipper, I'll turn it the other way and face the wheelhouse. I'm just going back to say a prayer now, to say that I'm still alive, and I'm, I'm glad, I'm happy now. Jimmy's not so happy. He's still praying for prawns. <laughs> After towing for the past four hours, the pair trawlers are hauling their net. And this time, Ryan's made it out on deck. I just got soaked. I'm freezing. Skipper Kevin has a bigger problem. They've caught very little. A worrying start for two of the most successful boats in the fleet. Where's the time? Where's the time? Instead of the 70 boxes Kevin expected, this hall will barely fill 20. Well, I need two baskets. Yes. In the gutting room, Ryan's been given two simple jobs. First, washing the fish. And second, tipping them down the chute to the fish room, but only on Martin's cue. Ryan! Fish down, Martin! Fish one! Yeah. Hey, watch your seat then! Yeah. Hey! Martin, watch your seat. It's hard to keep up. Hey! Shift here. You just put a fish. Put a fish down with food shouting. Just lands on the floor. Here. You've just got to pick it up again. Sometimes I feel as though I'm, they're, gone, they're mad at me because I'm not quite as quick as them and stuff. He was last in the line when the brands was dished out. I'm just, I've just got to hear, hear about patients, I'm just learning, so... Can't expect much to eat, look at Peterhead is the biggest whitefish port in the UK with catches worth more than 90 million pounds landed every year. The fish market opens at 7 a.m. sharp. This morning, the market is packed, but high competition means low prices. That's bad news for skipper John Buchan. He needs to sell Ocean Ventures fish for at least 30,000 pounds in order to make a profit. Well, when I, when I, I looked at the tally at the door, I saw the market was full, it was just depressed a bit. If the market is full, the fish boilers tend to be oversupplied, and they, they just pick and choose. 35 miles, 35 With John's haddock, Coley, and monkfish, all selling at rock bottom prices, He's barely covered the boat's running costs. It's not very good for your morale when you see poor prices for your catch. It's not very good. You steam a thousand mile, you have to pay for the fuel to steam a thousand mile. 
John took a risk this week, traveling to the deep waters of the Atlantic Ocean. It added over 10,000 pounds to his running costs. But he's the only skipper to have landed deep water fish. And he's hoping to corner the market with his Greenland halibut. John needs them to sell for 110 pounds a box. Bidding starts at 100. Very good. 160 pound a box. It's very good. Big, big money. I wouldn't expect on that. So I think we'll go to the deep water next week and catch halibuts again. John's plan is working. His other deep water catch, Redfish, also sells well, making an unexpected 5,000 pounds. Delighted. Huh? Skipper smiling. You want a lot next week. And as the icing on the cake, how many fish of us? Give us John's cod sold privately for another 5,000 pounds. This means that for 10 days at sea, Ocean Ventures six man crew will share more than 20,000 pounds. Delighted with that. The gamble going to deep water is paid off. Big time. <laughs> One hundred and fifty miles away from home, and eight days into a frustrating trip, Jimmy's finally found some prawns. Look at this. Quality prawns. Look at the size of the prawns in there. Beautiful prawns. These are the babies we're after. I'm excited. For first mate Kevin, it's a welcome sight. These are the best prawns we've seen all trip. Look at that. Just absolutely crackers. The restaurants, you pay a lot of money for that. Get that on a plate. You're paying up to 40 pounds for it. Unbelievable money. For now, the crew have to settle for more basic rations. It's another haul over, that. Eh? Another haul closer to home. But before the crew can even think of going home, they need to fill all of their 400 boxes with prawns. Jimmy's keen to know the tally. How much did you fill, Kevin? Hold on, hold on. Hold on, I'm holding on. This is getting exciting now. It's just the tense bit. This is the bit I always want to know. Have we made the grade for this haul? We've got 179. Same again for the next several hauls. We'll be doing all right. Yesterday it was doom and, doom and gloom, and today it's we're on the up again. Feeling positive at last, Jimmy immediately shoots the net again. But there's a problem. During the trip, Amity's net has pulled up a number of stones. This has finally taken its toll on the winches, which have failed. Jimmy manages to fix them, but if they break again with the net in the water, he will have to leave 30,000 pounds worth of fishing gear lying on the seabed. I'm taking a big risk because if we pick up another stone, then it's in that side, which is the side without the hydraulics. Bug up. If Jimmy's worst fears come true, he'll be forced to head home. With his boat half empty, he won't make enough money to pay the repair bill, let alone pay the crew. Like Jimmy, the pear trawlers haven't had a decent catch in days. Of their 1,500 boxes, they've only filled 50. It's Castlewood's turn to haul the net, and once again, it's disappointing. Ryan Wood's skipper, Kevin, is starting to get anxious. Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. Boys, 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 boys. Now we're getting a bit itchy. Let's see, uh, the poorest one this week so far, so 
this diabolical fool out like... Kevin wants his net in the water as soon as possible. It's all hands on deck. But trainee Ryan is missing. My, my head's really sore. Give Harley up my eyes. I really got the bullet at last moment. It's no, it's no point. There's no point in doing that job, you've got to feel it, guys. I feel like crying. Sometimes I feel like crying when I come down to go away, but you just to go. Hey. You just miss your wife's birthday, you miss your anniversary, you miss your kids going to school, it's not day. You just to do it. That's it. Simple as that. Some young men come away to this and when reality hits, it hits big style. He realizes maybe the the fishing the fishing industry is maybe not going to be the job for him. But if I don't stop taking more fish, I'll maybe have to stop thinking about <laughs> thinking about doing something different myself. Ryan's only made it as far as the wheelhouse. His lack of enthusiasm is beginning to frustrate the skipper. There's no use of coming, coming out here if he's, if he's getting bothered with sore heads and... and uh, maybe not able to do, do what he's supposed to be doing. So medically, he's to get himself sorted out first before he thinks about coming back out. Maybe it's, I think it's something to do with my eyes. That's enough. That's enough. Kevin decides it's time for a quiet word with Ryan. The fish out is one job and you're naked to survive if you're not like it. You didn't like the job, do you? It's she has to get back into every three, four hours. You didn't like it, do you? It's not bad. I just come for the money. Yeah? I just wanted to come for the, the money. Can you maybe have a CRD? I'm not saying you have a CRD. But if you're there 100% dedicated, there's nothing coming. There's nothing coming. Shout if they want. <laughs> Shout if they want. I don't think uh, he thinks much of the of the job just now. I, w I think he wishes he was back home with his mother. Tomorrow on Trawler Man. Ryan has to make a career choice between fish and chips. I'm more like the fish and the peel of potatoes. And Jimmy finds himself trapped between the devil and the deep blue sea. Looks like the devil's beat me this thing. 